everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. All right, let's go ahead and get going. We're going to jump into this tarot read. Uh, so I'm going to use, I'm going to use the letters uh, and we're going to start with those and then I'm going to use the numerology cards instead of using that number. So you'll have to focus on uh, those numbers on the numerology card because they might have a special meaning for you. But let's get started with these letters. I'll sort of help you to know whether this message is meant for you. This one wanted to pop out Q. Q wanted to pop out right away. We got a couple more here. We got F. There's one more from the back here. R. Let's see. We'll keep grabbing some until I feel like I need to stop. We got H. O. So these might be initials for a name, for a place. This might be within a, a license plate as well. So just keep an eye. You're going to know if these have special meaning to you. W. We have A. We have P. Then I want one more, one more card, please. We'll let one more come forward from the back. Keep getting Z. Keep getting Z. I don't know why Z is so freaking important, but I feel like it keeps showing up. Uh, let's see what we got here. So we're gonna grab the numerology cards. And we're gonna see what message comes forward. So take a look over those letters there. Let's see what we got. Compassion. Already in this card, this compassion, I feel like you were trying to help somebody. I feel like we're going to be talking about a situation where you kind of like took somebody, I don't know that you took them under under your wing. You did in some way, shape or form, and you tried to help somebody to sort of like overcome some of the crap that they had, help them choose a better path. I feel like you're a pretty spiritual person. I feel like you believe everything happens for a reason. Like God has a plan for each of us. Nothing's by accident. So like this person crossing your path was not an accident. I do feel like you felt like you were there to help them. The two of you were brought together for a reason. I do feel like you did your best to try and help them completion. At some point this did, this did come to an end. In this completion, I I don't feel, I don't feel happily ever after, I got to tell you that. I feel like this person just did not get it. Like this person didn't step up to the plate and really take the help that you were offering. In this completion, I feel like a, a needing to sever ties because somebody wouldn't do their part. Follow your dreams. I also feel like this... This follow your dreams is kind of belonging to this person who did not take the advice. I don't think it was following their dreams as much as it was following their ego and doing something that felt good. Doing something that felt good. I feel like this goes against what you were trying to teach them. So whatever this is that feels good to them that they wanted to pursue, it's something that's self-destructive. As is something you were trying to help them to move away from whatever the self-destructiveness is. Are you trying to help them with that personal growth? Being able to mature and become a better person. Forgiveness. Uh, I feel like this person... I'm going to tell you, I get the word grudge. This person holds on to grudges. Uh, this is part of what holds them back. There's something that happened to them in the past that they're not letting go of. And it has like a destructive force in their relationship. I feel like the way that they, the way that they try to cope with it, this is this destructiveness, this follow your dreams. This is, I don't know if they're, they're drinking or they're using something, but it winds up being extremely destructive in their lives. I feel like when they were with you, it was definitely lessened. Like, I don't know if they totally got on top of it, but I do feel like you were, you were able to sort of help push them away from those toxic habits. Effort. I feel like it took a lot of effort on your part. I feel like it was always a fight to, to get them to like, stop and think about what they were doing. Like, don't go back to whatever that is. Environment, nature. I feel like part of your helping them to was sort of like taking them out of uh, the situations that they're usually in. I like the way that they're usually hanging out with people, whether this is in bars or something. I do feel like nature, getting out into nature was sort of a part of things. It's something that you enjoy. It's something that you find healing. It's something that helps you to connect to your spirituality. And I do feel that when you encourage them to do so, it did make a difference in their life. 
I do feel like it did make a difference. It helped them uh, to sort of step away from things. Change. I feel like there was a temporary change. I do feel there was a temporary change when this person was with you. You had a very positive influence on their life. At times, I feel like it felt like they had almost sort of turned the page and conquered whatever this was. But it didn't last. I, it's a healing process that takes a very, very long time. And I don't feel like they completely got on top of it while they were with you. Even in this domestic harmony, I feel like it only showed up in sort of bits and pieces. Like there were times. There was times when there was harmony. But a lot of times it was still this behavior that brought chaos. And ultimately it was like this person could not overcome it. I get that in this surrender card too. It was like this person just could not 100% overcome this. They had good moments when they were with you. Because you were a solid figure in their life. You were someone who encouraged sort of moving in the right way. And moving in a healthy way. You brought a certain level of abundance and inner peace to them. But these demons are, they run deeper than that. They run deeper than that. And it's like, this is something that you couldn't fix. And you couldn't encourage them into fixing it for themselves. It's something that's bigger than you. You know, like everybody has their own path to walk in life. And same with this person. They have their own path too. Ooh, we had a couple cards come absolutely flying out. What do we got? Ooh, the King of Wands is the first one that popped up. Uh, this is his energy that you were dealing with. They're very self-destructive. They are very self-destructive. You tried so hard to help this person. You are like this page of pentacles trying to offer building, trying to offer better health, trying to offer a happier way of life and more abundance and stability. Stability is huge. This person has like zero stability. Uh, they very much are impulsive and give in, to, give in to whatever this is that they're always chasing. Like I said, it's not a dream. It's not a dream. I don't care what the card says. They're not chasing a dream. This is like a way of sort of like hiding or burying emotions. It's something that feels good in the moment. And it's something that's extremely self-destructive and has a destructive uh, force in their life. Surrender. I also feel like at some point with this surrender card, like you, you had to sort of sever ties or you had to allow ties to be severed for yourself for your own peace of mind because this person had such a toxic influence. Uh, I can't remember which of my viewers would leave um, a comment saying that they, they gave someone back to the streets. That's what I feel like, giving back to the streets. You're just like, I can't. I can't. I can't fix you. Like, you don't want to fix yourself. I can't fix you. Like, you have to go live your life then and I have to live mine. There has to be a separation here because it's like it was all consuming trying to fix them, trying to stay on top of them, trying to keep them from uh, from going down this nasty path. And like I said, they had moments. They had moments where things were like this domestic harmony, uh, where they seemed like they were at peace with themselves. I do feel like there were definitely positive moments there where they seemed like they were getting on top of their emotions and finding happiness. And it's because you were such a healing influence in their life. I'm gonna grab a few more. I feel like they've gone back to their old habits. Once the two of you parted ways, I feel like they very quickly sort of went downhill back into what they were doing. Whatever this was from before. Yeah, I feel like this person has not, I feel like this person hasn't really learned their lesson. I feel like this person hasn't really done their shadow work. Um, this time of you trying to like mentor them, trying to help them find wisdom, trying to help them find insight, trying to help them find uh, health, like mind, body, soul, emotional health. It's like without you there as a stabilizing influence, this person just right back to where they were, right back to where they were. It was like this time of this little bit of healing that they had and sort of like this glimpse of what life could be, I do feel like this chapter has come to an end. Like without you there to prop them up, it's like they allowed themselves to slip back into old habits. And two of Cups. We're going to grab a few more here. I want to know where that Two of Cups comes into play. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. It's like when they were with you, they had this chance for abundance. Now that, now that you're gone, now that you're not there to prop them up and to try and help guide them and almost like save them from themselves, they've just gone into this like five, five of pentacles. Uh, it's like crash and burn. This person is like hardcore crashing and burning uh, emotionally. All that stuff that they're trying to hide, all the stuff they don't want to deal with. Uh, I feel like even the hurt from the breakup and you not being around, it's like they're allowing it to consume them and they're moving in a self-destructive way. And it's because they're not dealing with emotions. That's part of this person's problem too, is they don't deal with their emotions. They bottle things up. They bottle things up and use other ways to try and hide their emotions or suppress their emotions. The Hermit card. The Hermit card is encouraging this person to be able to do their shadow work, to get introspective, to start looking from within, you know, why did this relationship with someone who you value come to an end? Why did it end? Well, was it because of your self-destructive ways? Was it because uh, it was not in balance because it was almost like parent-child where like you were trying to look after whoever this person was, you were trying to help them. You almost became like Kind of like a parent, which made this person want to rebel more and more. And it's like instead of it being an equal partnership where it could have thrived because you're somebody who's very nurturing as well. Karma. Karma tells me we get back what we put out there, right? This person has sort of been putting this negative energy out there. They've been refusing to do their shadow work. They've been sort of like refusing to deal with their crap. And so moving in this negative way, gets them more of the same, gets them more of the same. I get pulled to this Ace of Pentacles and I feel like it's speaking to money. I feel like this person's going through an extremely rough time financially. And it's also because of their own making. It's because of whatever this, this follow your dreams thing is. So if this is drinking, if this is drugs, uh, whatever this bad habit is that they have, this vice to suppress these emotions, as because it's completely out of control. This person's completely gone downhill. This is out of control. They're back to their old ways. It's like depleted any bit of money that they have. So this person is going through an extremely rough time financially. That seven of pentacles tells me though that this is completely of their own making. It is completely of their own making. And eight of cups, that refusal to look at emotions. That's not normally what that eight of cups represents, but I see it in this one. There's like a refusal to look at the past. There's a refusal to deal with emotions from the past. There's a refusal to be able to sort of like see the light, to see the light, to find some insight, to shed light on those dark things that, that are causing this person to want to deal with their shit in this way. They are responsible for holding themselves back. It's so not just the financial situation that they're in. That's just a side effect of the way that they choose to cope with things. As like that vice, allowing that vice to run away on them and allowing it to consume their life. I do feel like they hit things while the two of you were together too. And it did have to do with the vice. It was the choices that they were making. I just keep feeling like you had to stay on top of this person. Uh, otherwise you felt like they would completely slip and back into this habit. Because I feel like they hid certain things about this habit. Like this was ongoing. I just feel like it was like, I feel like worn down. Because like, you tried and you tried and you had these really nice moments where you thought you were making a breakthrough and this person was was coming around. This person was was going to become the person that you knew that they could be if they really tried and they dealt with their shit. And then it would like slip right back, slip right back. It's just like fucking over and over and over again. I feel exhausted having this come forward in the cars. So I can't imagine what it must have felt like to live with it. It must have been very exhausting and very disappointing over and over again. It was like this person would not get on top of their choices. This person would not consistently make positive choices to move towards the Ten of Cups. Just when you thought you had a Ten of Cups, they'd slip up and you'd find that they were hiding something again. And I do feel like it has to, this whole read revolves around this person's vices and how they deal with their shadows. And I do feel that Six of Swords severing ties. And that was in that completion. Right at the beginning, this nine card completion. It's like having to step away having to step away, even in the surrender card, having to just give them back, give their journey back to them. And it's something that they have to deal with on their own so that you can have your peace of mind. 
You really did want to build a legacy with this person. I feel you were very much in this Queen of Pentacles. You're somebody who's loyal. You're somebody who's giving. You're somebody who's nurturing. And you were trying to help them to build a legacy with you. A very enjoyable, positive legacy that was going to be happy. But this was something this person is not capable of. This is something this person has to figure out for themselves. It was way beyond you. And anything that you can do uh, to, to be able to help somebody see the light. I'm going to grab a few more because I feel like there's a little bit more to that Ten of Pentacles. So, Tarot, can you give me some more clarification on this situation? Knight of Swords. I feel like you had to protect your own legacy, too. I feel like there was a recognition that tying yourself to this person, and I am, I am feeling financially, it would have a detriment to you. Because this is what their vice does to them. It sort of leaves them completely broke. There's a huge lack of self-control once they give into this. And it's like a, a downward spiral and everything happens very fast. And all of a sudden, then there's no money left. I do feel like uh, part of having to surrender, having to bring this to completion, was like saving yourself and saving your legacy. So that you would not wind up in like that that five of pentacles and that being without, out in the cold kind of thing. Knight of Swords. I also feel like you just got tired of fighting. You just got tired of fighting for this person to see the truth. You're just like, this person's not going to see the truth. Why am I banging my head against a wall? Trying to make this person see something that they don't want to see. And it's like, now is a time to be true to myself. And so I do feel a moving on. I do feel a moving on and moving forward. And starting a new chapter of your life. In this wheel of the year, I feel like the wheel of fortune. I feel like it's something that you're turning for yourself. It's something that you're working hard to turn for yourself. You try to include this person in it. But it's something they weren't capable of taking part in. So now it's like having to do it for yourself. I do feel in this wheel card too. I feel like a new perspective and sort of recognizing this because I feel like for for a period of time you took this on as almost like a failing within you that you couldn't help this person to see the light. That like if you just would have tried harder, if you just would have blah, 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 blah. And I see in this, it was not my fault. I did everything I could to help them. This is their path to walk. I tried to help them on their journey and I couldn't do it. I see like a releasing of guilt. I see a releasing of anger. I get pulled back to that forgiveness card and sort of like forgiving this person for what they put you through and just recognizing that they have all their own demons to deal with. And so hanging on to any anger against this person does you no good. And, and it's just like recognizing they got to deal with their shit. They got way too much shit going on. There's no point in being mad at them. I might as well just focus on my journey forward. And hopefully at some point they will get their shit together for themselves. The Page of Cups, I see no ill will held towards this person either. I don't, even with everything that happens, I feel like you're somebody who's more spiritually elevated. You're somebody who sees everything happens for a reason. That's why I was feeling in this forgiveness card too, like this sort of like letting go. Letting go. This person needs to find their way. I'm not going to hold a grudge against them. I'm not going to hold any negative feelings towards them. The star card is that clarity that the fool card was talking about too. Recognizing it's their journey to take. You can't make other people do the right thing. You can't make people see the truth. All you can do is be strong within yourself and hope that other people find their own inner strength. I see you finally severing ties with the heartache and finding healing for yourself and making peace and being able to move on and move forward the moon card this person is up to them to face their darkness it's up to them to face their secrets it's up to them to sort through it that knight of pentacles i feel like you were somebody who you're like a steady eddie you're like a steady eddie you're somebody who offers a lot of stability you're somebody who's willing to put in the work uh even if it takes a long time to be able to get to what you want i feel like if this person wants healing and this person wants happiness this person wants stability it's gonna be a journey over time it's gonna take this person years to sh to sort through all their shadow work this will not be an overnight process if this person really truly wants it it's going to take a lot of time for them to deal with their crap temperance temperance i do see balance in this card i also see protected 
protected. But this has to do with you as well. This has to do with your forgiveness. This has to do, I think you pray for this person. That's what it is. You pray for this person to find balance. That's what this is. That was a very clear message in this card. You wish them no ill will. And that's what I felt further on. And in this, it just confirms that you pray that someday they find peace. You pray that someday they find happiness. You pray that someday that they're able to sort their crap out and live a happy life. Because you've seen the type of person that they can be when they're able to step away from these vices. Like I said, you had those windows. You had those windows where they came through, right? And you saw who they truly were and who they truly should be. But the path is theirs. The path is theirs to walk and you recognize that now. Uh, we are going to draw, we're going to draw an energy card. Which one? Token. I get pulled to the tarot tokens. So that's what we're going to grab. I'm going to grab a tarot token here. We'll see what comes forward. Okay. Flip it over. Oh, we got the blank one. So the blank one represents destiny. It represents the unknowable. This person's path is still unwritten. It's still unwritten at any moment. This person could see the light and could change their shit. But we do have the flip side of that. And this person could spend the rest of their days lost in these vices. I don't believe the cards have the answer because there is still a lot of variables in this person's life as to which direction they're going to go. I feel like I need to pull another tarot token as well. Let's see. So we'll flip that one over. And we have the moon card or the moon token. The moon represents those secrets, right? That darkness. If this person is willing to look into their darkness and they're willing to do the shadow work, the change will happen. Then they're capable of making the change. But if they're forever going to hide from this darkness, then they're going to stay within the vices. This is about them finding the courage to dig deep and make that change for themselves. Alrighty guys, I hope that you enjoyed that read. If you did, please hit that like, that subscribe. It definitely helps these messages to get out there. Alright, take care.